Welcome to this edition of Lakeside Physics. For today, we will be talking about Newton's second law. Now remember that from Newton's first law, we talked about that an object that has balanced forces acting on it will maintain its state of motion, either at rest or constant velocity. What happens if the forces are unbalanced? Well, Newton said, a change in motion is proportional to the motive force impressed and takes place along the straight line in which that force is impressed. A sort of quick way of saying this is that the net force is equal to the mass times acceleration. Unbalanced forces cause accelerations. Mass. Inertia as a property is quantified by an object's mass. The greater the object's mass, the greater its inertia. Be careful, mass, which is measured in kilograms, is not equal to the weight, which is measured in newtons. Recall that we said our force of gravity, or our weight, is equal to the mass times little g, whatever the acceleration due to gravity is. That'll look different on the Earth than it does on the Moon, than it does in the middle of space. Net force equals mass times acceleration. If we consider the units of this, mass is measured in kilograms, acceleration is measured in meters per second squared, and we redefine that as a new unit called the Newton. What is mass? Well, ask CERN and the Higgs boson. For us, it is just a fundamental property of matter. Steps for solving a force problem. First, this is going to look really similar, keeps on coming back. First, you're going to write down what you're trying to find. Draw a free body diagram. Pick a direction of motion. So depending on what the what direction the acceleration is, you will usually pick that as the direction of motion. Write a net force equation for that direction of motion. Set net force equal to zero or mass times acceleration. Solve substituting as necessary. And finally, if you get stuck, pick a new direction. So maybe if you're working in the x direction, you might need to go to the y direction or consider a new concept. So let's do, we're going to do three example problems. The first example, a three kilogram book is sliding across the floor at a constant speed, er, sorry, is sliding across the floor at a speed of 15 meters per second. A frictional force of 15 newtons slows the book down. What is the acceleration of the book? So first, write down what you're trying to find. We're looking for the acceleration. Draw a free body diagram. So we have weight acting down, normal force acting up that's counteracting the weight, and our frictional force. So if it's moving, if it, the book is sliding to the right, then our frictional force will act to the left. So we're going to, since we're looking for the acceleration, we know it's going to be in the x direction. We're going to pick that as our direction of motion. So the net force in the x direction should just be equal to negative the force of friction. Note that when we put the force of friction down, the force of friction is going to be a positive value and we will indicate the direction with the negative sign. So mass times acceleration should be equal negative force of friction and we get 3 times A is equal to negative 15 or the acceleration is negative 5.0 meters per second squared. Let's consider another problem. Example 2. A large helium balloon is rising at 2.0 meters per second per second. The buoyant force acting on the balloon is 0 0.45 newtons. What is the mass of the balloon? Now note that the 2 meters per second per second is an acceleration. We know that because of the units, even though it hasn't explicitly said this. So first, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the mass of the balloon. Let's draw our free body diagram. We know we're going to have a buoyant force upwards and the weight down. We're going to pick a direction of motion. This, in this case, the y direction makes sense since all the forces are acting in the y direction. And we write down the force equation. The buoyant force minus the weight needs is equal to the net force. We know that's mass times acceleration and we can replace our weight with mg. Now, if we just plug in the information we know, <coughs> we can we see that we end up with mass on both sides, and we can rearrange this equation, solve for the mass, and we get that the mass is 0 0.0375 kilograms, rounding to appropriate sig figs, that's 0 0.038 kilograms. 
Again, notice that if you wanted to try to say that you wanted to plug in what the value of the weight was, you would get stuck. Leaving it as a general form is just mass times 10 allows you to see that you really only have one vari unknown variable and you can solve for it. Let's do one more example. Ms. Butler is dragging a 22 kilogram suitcase across the floor at a brisk pace of 3.0 meters per second. Suddenly the wheels on the suitcase break. Despite Ms. Butler supply, supplying a constant force of 150 newtons at an angle of 36.87 degrees above the horizontal, the suitcase grinds to a halt after 1.8 meters. What was the force of friction acting on the suitcase after the wheels broke? Again, our first step, write down what you're trying to find. So we're trying to find the force of friction. We're going to draw our free body diagram. Um, in this particular case, we're going to have a pull upward and at an angle. We'll have our weight down, a normal force up, and friction off to the left. And again, we're going to, since we're interested in um, the frictional force, which is in the x direction, we will write down a net force equation for the x direction. And it should be equal to the pull in the x direction minus the force of friction. And that has to be equal to the mass times acceleration. Now, the pull in the x direction is the 150 newtons times the cosine of 36.87 degrees, and then minus the force of friction. And we plug in these values, and we see we're stuck we have two unknown variables. So we either need to consider a new direction or a new concept. In this particular case, they've, been, they've given us that the suitcase grinds to a halt after 1.8 meters. This might make us think about kinematic equations. We know that the velocity in the x direction was 3 meters per second, the initial velocity. We know that it's going to come to a halt, so the final velocity is 0. And the displacement is 1.8 meters. This allows us to solve for the acceleration. Now that we know the acceleration, we can plug it back into our force equation up above and solve for the force of friction, 175 newtons. Note that this is positive because I have already, by saying f pull x minus f sub f, have already um, specified that to be a negative to be in the negative direction so that when we solve for it we get a positive value. And if correctly rounded, that should round to 180 newtons. That's it for this edition. Remember that net force equals mass times acceleration is the basis of Newton's second law.